Good morning and Happy New Year. This is Shoe Lane, it takes you up to Holborn, but there's just not much to see up there. It's all office blocks basically. That's why I didn't walk up Poppins Court. It does get a bit more interesting, I assure you. So here's the first one, Cheshire Colt. Let's have a look up here. Don't look like there's much up here. Setting the security lights off. Nothing up here. The old Cheshire cheese. Rebuilt in 1667. Well, look at that, it's got the reins of all the monarchs. It's still got Elizabeth II, 1952. Until when? And up the side we've got Wine Office Court. Let's have a look up here. A little bit of history there. That's a bit too dark to see all that. It's amazing that amongst all these office blocks and more recent buildings, occasionally you get the old, you, you get the odd old terrace of buildings like this. I should imagine that once upon a time that did stretch all the way along. One office court. I'm not sure how well you're picking this up, it is still quite dark. Got to wait for these mornings to get a bit lighter for these videos to become more watchable, I think. I don't know, maybe they're a bit more atmospheric in this, uh, in this dim light. Why well, off his cult, it goes all the way up here and round the corner. Oh, back down to Shoe Lane. This old cannon. 
We have a bit of product placement there. All oh, right, gunpowder square, hence the cannon. So we're in Gunpowder Square. Oh, sorry. No, this is Goff Square now. Let me just check that again. Right, yeah, that's Gunpowder Square. And this is going into Goff Square. talking statue be amazed no, I can't be bothered I'd rather read what it says tribute to the work of Major Byron F. Cause in the preparation of the concise Oxford Dictionary erected by his grandson Richard By Byron Cause September 1997 It's a cat and an oyster shell on a book. <laughs> Hodge, a very fine, very fine cat indeed, belonging to Samuel Johnson, 1709 to 1784 of Gough Square. So this cat, a couple of hundred years ago, it's been immortalised in this little statuette. It's amazing really, what you find in the back streets of London. So this is Gough Square, and some of these buildings up the end here, they do look quite old, as opposed to this side, which looks quite modern. Dr. Samuel Johnson, author, lived here 1709 to 1784 in that fine old building there's another one there Francis Barber, once a slave in Jamaica Samuel Johnson's servant, friend and heir lived here 1752 to 1756 Dr Johnson's house that's a museum. Open Monday to Saturdays, May to September. 11am to 5.30. October to April, 11am to 5pm. Oh, right, okay. That's handy. Closed Sundays and bank holidays when everyone's got time off. The curator's cottage. Morning. 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 So where is this bringing us out to? Hockenier Water. Or where I'm from, even water.
missed the plaque there. Got to go back to read the plaque. In a house on this site, Dr. Samuel Johnson lived between 1765 and 1776. Right, he lived all over the place here. He lived here, he lived there just across the way there. It's all about Samuel, Samuel Johnson around here. So I'm assuming this is going to bring us back out onto Fleet Street. And it does. Twenty-eighth of March, two thousand and one, the British Institute of Professional Photography celebrated the centenary of its first meeting as the Professional Photographers Association at Anderton's Hotel, which originally stood on this site. Okay. Johnson's Court. Well, there's one more or maybe a couple more places to look at while I'm up here because a little bit further is Crane Court and I've already done that one so what we've got here is Red Lion Court and my fingers are freezing it is really cold I must say Red Lion Colt. The iconic and very British red telephone box. Who would ever know it was down the street? <laughs> It's a shame really, there's not a hell of a lot down here to see. Flemem. It's obviously Latin. I haven't had a classical education, so I can't tell you what that means. And once again, a little back streets open up into shiny big office blocks red line courts and this is Pemberton Row I think yes it is oh, I've got to swap hands my fingers on this hand are freezing back out onto Fleet Street and I think that's all there is to show you really with regards to back streets of the north side of this part of Fleet Street we've got St Dunstan's Colt but I should imagine this is going to take us to a place we've already been I'll walk up there anyway. That's a shame to see that. 
at least it's uh, maybe a degree or so warmer in these little little side alleyways. St Dunstan's Colt. How did I miss this? There's just so many different places. I should imagine this is the other side of Gough Square, which we was a little while ago. This is Bolt Court. And this is the site of the Stationers Company School, 1861 to 1893. Right. Look at them green tiles down there on that building. So there's another court and another another plaque on the wall. So this is still bolt court or bolt court as I would call it. Site of the Medical Society of London, 1787 to 1850. Gifted by a founder, John Coakley. Let some M. Whatever that is at the end. Shall I say that again? I really mess that up. Site of the Medical Society of London, 1787-1850. Gifted by a founder, John Coakley Letsom. And whatever them letters are after his name. So we've got another one here that I haven't been down, Hind Court. Well, we went up this, was it Wine Court or something up the side of the old Cheshire Cheese? Yeah, Wine Office Court. I did walk up there, I haven't walked up this one, Hind Court. Avery and Salad House. Okay. City accommodations. I wonder how much they charge for you to stay there. I could think of worse places to stay. At least you're in the, in the centre of a really historical part of London. Oh yeah, we did come up here. I remember that tree. Alright, so I'm probably probably covering old ground here, Gough Square. It's like a maze, I don't know where I've been and where I've not. Oh right, yeah, I remember that up there. Dr. Johnson's house. It's alleyways all over the place here. the cat there. I've been down here. Oh, I think that's it. I've covered most of these little back streets. Well all of them actually. So until the next one when I've probably had a haircut and a beard trim I'll see you next time.
somebody stuck something on her teeth. Always makes me laugh when I see that. Ooh. Suicidal cyclists of London. That's it. Adios amigos. I know I said that was the end of the video, but I'm at Leggate Circus. There's just one more thing to show you. Edgar Wallace, reporter born London 1875, died in Hollywood 1932. Found a member of the company of newspaper makers. He knew wealth and poverty, yet had walked with kings and kept his bearing. Of his talents he gave lavishly to authorship, but to Fleet Street he gave his heart. That geezer there. Alright, this is the end. See you in the next one.